This is something that I've been wanting to talk about for some time, and it's a subject that I've been wanting to bring up uh, for some time because I wanted to bring it into uh, into the light and explain it to people. I'm disabled. I'm a disabled gamer. Now, obviously, I'm not in a wheelchair. Uh, there are different types of disabilities. There's physical disabilities, there's mental disabilities, and there's visual disabilities. And I know a visual disability is technically a physical disability, but it's treated differently because there are different requirements for being able to get around, um, being able to live your daily life. And being a gamer with a disability brings a lot of challenges. Now, Microsoft released a controller for people who are disabled, who have physical disabilities. Uh, there are people with mental disabilities that have, that sometimes playing games actually helps them. And then there are people with visual disabilities. Playing games for me helped with my hand-eye coordination, for instance. But there's some challenges with it. Now, I'm what's called legally blind. Now, what that means is, the government has set a certain visual acuity, 2200, as being the point where you are considered legally blind. Although 2200, you still have usable vision, by the government's definition, you are a blind person. And that is where they, because it's harder to determine if you are disabled or not, if you have a visual problem. It's easier if you have a physical disability like you can't walk and you're stuck in a wheelchair. Now, it, it, it's easier than with someone who has a mental disability because that's easy to diagnose, but vision is harder to diagnose because you have to go by various tests to determine a person's visual acuity their visual prescription for their vision or whether or, not, whether or not they can actually see or not. And so they set the visual acuity for 2200 to determine if someone is visually disabled or not. And if your vision is that or worse, you are called legally blind. And if you are legally blind, you are entitled to certain protections under the law you are entitled to a certain, um, a certain uh, not just protections, but also certain privileges, rights, uh, things, uh, especially under the Americans with Disabilities Act. You have all sorts of protections under that, like a guide dog. You can, if you're, if you have total blindness, you can go anywhere with a guide dog, and it is a violation of federal law. To deny you service if you have a dog with you and it's a guide dog. It is a violation of federal law. It is a felony, actually. But I have usable vision. I don't need a guide dog. But I still do use a cane. And this one came from the National Federation for the Blind. Uh, this one I got for free. You can order them. It's a straight fiberglass cane. It's it's old, it's beat up, I need to get a new one. And you go, why do you have a cane if you still have usable vision? It's important, very important, because though I still have usable vision, nobody else knows that I have a vision problem. And this is more for identification than it is for practical use to get around. Also, my vision has certain problems. Uh, so I have blind spots in my vision, and so when we know, when Tiger and I both have, are both legally blind, if we're in a busy metropolitan area, and we're out and about, we will try to take our canes with us, so that we can show people, you know, we have vision problems, and so when we're crossing a street, we may not know if a vehicle is coming, we may not be able to see it. Because I know um, I wasn't able to see a lot of vehicles that were coming, especially in parking lots and things. So we have a, a friend who is usually with us that can tell us, hey, there's a car there. And I have not seen that car at all. Although it was practically right next to me, I could not see it. 
but they could because they were behind me. They couldn't, the even, even Tigra often couldn't see some stuff. So having these is absolutely vital. I'm going to be ordering a, uh, a new folding cane so that when we're out and about, you know, road trip or whatever, we have this to identify ourselves when we're walking around. Now getting to the point of being a gamer and having a visual impairment. As I said, I have blind spots in my vision, and how they determine that is a test where they have you stand in front of this machine and it has a, a, a domed surface with a bunch of holes in it, little holes. And you stand very still, you put your chin on a rest, you stand very still, and they will blink lights in these little holes. And every time you see a light, you push a button, and it prints it out on a sheet of thermal sensitive paper. And where you don't see the light blink is where you have holes in your vision, where you have um, blind spots in your vision. And your brain, your the meat up here, will blend in. You won't see those blind spots. Your brain will blend in your surroundings around where those blind spots are. So. You can't consciously tell where those blind spots are unless you actually focus on those. It will look as if there's nothing there or it will look as if it's in your peripheral vision. That's the way it looks to me. Those blind spots will look like they're in my peripheral vision. Uh, it won't look like blurry spots. Your brain does a lot of, uh, does a lot of blending in here of the images. And so it looks perfectly normal to you but something could be in that spot, like over here, and you can't see it very well. A normal person would be able to see the head of this cane. I can't. Right now, I, I'm i looking forward over here. I can see the head of that cane. Right here, it's like the head of the cane disappears from the shaft literally just vanishes and I see uh, the just image blurred together right here and I've got other blind spots in my vision and Tigra suffers from the same problems we also um, I am an albino so is Tigra Tigra is more so being albino is not something where you either are or you aren't there are different degrees like shades of gray He's more so than I am. I had white hair when I was a child, and eventually my hair grew dark. That's normal. What is the same for all albinos is we have light skin, we burn easy in sunlight, and the uh, spot in the back of my eye where the light focuses is bleached white. And so we're extremely light sensitive, which is why I resisted for a long time using this setup here the uh, the green screen it's you don't see it it's in the other side of the camera i rested for a long time using that because the lights just blind the hell out of me using it and so playing games can be a challenge we need large screens the higher resolution um displays have gone that have gone we've had to adapt and you know just adapt to the way games look now like playing battlefront 2 sometimes i can't tell what the hell is going on you know you see me do streams of battlefront 2 with tigra and sometimes i can't tell what the hell is going on i can't tell where people are i usually try to play if, if we're in um, if we're on Yavin, or if we are on Takodana, I think it's Takodana, you know, I will try to be on the Rebel side, not on the Empire, because I could then see the White of the Stormtroopers, and sometimes they are a, a blur, sometimes they're not. Uh, the more detailed those graphics get, the harder it is for me to see them. Same thing with uh, Hell Let Loose. When I did Hell Let Loose for the Gamers Bay 4th of July stream, I had a hard time seeing other players because 
way my vision is. You know? And my visual acuity is different per eye. And I've got a I've got a lazy eye, you can see um, why my eye goes everywhere. And I've got other issues. I've got stigmatism, uh, nystagmus, I keep forgetting what they call that. Basically my eye is misshapen. And so if you go outside in the dark and you look at a bright light source, like a street light, and you see streaks coming out of the light source, like it's some kind of um, pul like it's a pulsar or something, you've got nystagmus. And it's different for each people. Sometimes you'll see the streak this way, sometimes up and down, sometimes side to side. It depends. And it makes it very difficult for me to uh, have glasses because my prescription changes. And also it gives me a massive headache wearing them. So I've had glasses before and I would wear them, but over time it would just be too much. I can't adapt to it. it, it, it it gives me a lot of headaches and they even tried contact lenses and I just could not adapt to it. So it's a challenge. It's a challenge being a gamer with poor vision. And I think I've done fairly well for someone who has, you know, the vision that I've got. Tiger is worse than me and he plays games. You know, he's, he played, you know, uh, Soul Calibur, and he plays Final Fantasy XIV. I played Final Fantasy XIV, I played Soul Calibur, I played a lot of shooters, I played on the tournament a lot back in the day. I play Cyberpunk right now, I'm playing the hell out of Cyberpunk, I'm, I'm like that game. Pretty soon I'm going to play Gotham Knights, and I like the Batman Arkham series a lot. Uh, I want to go back and play some more Hell Let Loose and stuff. It's It can be a challenge. Uh, one thing, with our vision we can't do 4K. Because at 1080p, 1080p is basically the limit of where things are visible to us. Where we can actually see what the hell's on the screen. We actually read the screen, actually read the text. And I know that you can, with Windows and Mac or Linux, you can adjust uh, the settings for the fonts and everything. But some games have really tiny text. And so 1080p is sort of the limit of how, you know, how far we can take the resolution and still be able to see the game correctly. Be able to actually read text on the screen, what's happening and everything. It, it, it can be a challenge. So we will never go to 4K or we don't have the hardware for it anyway. We don't have the displays for the, for the longest time. We used 720p screens. We used Samsung TVs. 720p Samsung TVs as our monitors. And now we have these curved Samsung 1080p displays. We're going to stick with those. And we're not going to go to 4K. We're going to stick with 1080p. 1080p for us is good enough. And, you know, playing at 4K, while it might look good, it would make things too small for a vision. Way too small. So, I think we've done fairly well for what our vision allows us to do. You now, we hold our own pretty well in FPS games, especially online FPS games. You know, I, I did fairly well in Overwatch haven't done Overwatch 2, I don't know if I will. I might do that because I sort of miss playing it. Although I, I don't, I'm very disappointed in Blizzard right now. But I'm wanting to see what all the hubbub is about it. 
I know a lot of some people are disappointed with it. I I don't know. There there aren't many other games like it except maybe Paladins. I've played that a lot. But um It's a challenge. It is a real challenge being a disabled gamer. Um especially in visual disability. Right now I'm I'm recording this with my phone. It's in front of me and all I see is a blur. I don't see the details of my face on the screen that's pointed at me right now. It's a blur. That's the other thing. I, you got to sit close to the screen. The screens have to be close to us. So we don't have our monitors on a stand. We have them on an arm that allows them to come forward so that we can actually see what the hell we're doing. It's concessions like that that we have to do in order to be able to play games in order to do it. We, we have to do things that other people, ordinary people, wouldn't do. As other people, they could sit far back from a screen and play games. Or, or if people go to the theater, they could sit way back and be able to enjoy the movie, whereas the entire group, we have to sit fairly close. Not exactly front row, but we would go back like four or five rows back just to be able to see the screen. Uh, interestingly enough, despite my my uh, weird vision and his, we can experience the 3D effect in VR very well. But because the screens are so close to our eyes, we can actually see it very well. I can see it better. I can see VR better than I can see this room right now. Everything behind my phone is a partial blur. I mean, it's a partial blur. In the screen of my phone, I can't barely make out details on my face. And and everything. But in VR, I can see it. Uh, in 3D movies, if we are sitting like the fifth row back, like uh, some of them have those tiered seating, and if we go to that, that first tier, right after the ramp that comes from the entrance, and you turn around, and it has those handicap seating. We can sit there, put on the uh, 3D glasses, those those um, polarized 3D glasses. We can actually see the 3D effect. Well, most of the time. The only movie that we actually could see the 3D effect really well was Avatar. That was where the 3D effect was just incredible. But every other movie it was, eh, why did we pay more to do 3D when we could have just done the regular 2D movie? It's like, we can tell when it's a conversion and when it's not. And Avatar was not a conversion. It, it, the 3D effect was awesome. It's, the 3D effect in Avatar is the kind of 3D effect that I see in VR. That I'm able to see. And also, I like... Um, VR because sometimes it's dark. Um, there were some spots in, in Half-Life Alex where they had this really bright white in there that just completely blew my eyes out, like in the beginning of the game and um, ending credits. But otherwise, it's darker, and I like using the HTC Vive because it has an OLED display. And OLED displays have those true blacks. That's why I opted to buy a used headset rather than try and get something new, like a Index. Tiger's got the Index and he, he likes it, but it's sort of, kind of, because you have that bleed through of light through the LCDs. Uh, in dark, really dark scenes. Now, it's not as a problem in something like Beat Saber, which I was streaming. I did stream once, and we had some drama around here. Uh, I'll talk about that on another video. We're going to be moving, but I'll explain some of the stuff behind that later. But, um, but games like Elite Dangerous or Space Games or Half-Life Alex, where the environments are really dark, that light bleed through is a problem. So that's why I go for OLED. 
and that gives me, you know, really good visuals, and I can see it. I can see it really well. I don't have any problems in VR making things out with my vision. But regular games on a screen, I sometimes have problems. I sometimes can't see that you know there's somebody there, and they shoot me. You know, playing Battlefront 2 or um, Hell Let Loose or any of those other games. I know I'm rambling along, and and everything. This is completely unscripted. Uh, explanation of things, but I wanted to talk about this to bring it to light because you know there are people like us who love playing video games who aren't able to do the things that normal people can do, and you know we have a reason for why we can't. Where there are others who make up reasons because of made up genders and made up problems that they think is a problem but isn't. Anyway, thank you for sitting through my rant or my little explanation of things. I've been wanting to get this video out for some time. A uh, few things coming up. I am bringing back a lot of VR content to Zort Central. I'll be doing, I'll be rebooting my playthrough of Half-Life Alex. I know I have an unfinished playthrough. I'm going to start over. Um, it's a series called Virtual Worlds, and I'm going to focus, that series is going to focus on stuff for VR, because I absolutely love it. I don't play it enough, and that's bothering me a lot. Because I went through the trouble of finding a good, pristine, used, you know, VR headset, and I hardly use it. And there are some great VR games out there, and I, I want to show you what they're like. So I'm going to do playthroughs of Half-Life Alex, the Half-Life 2 VR mod, I want to do that, Boneworks, that is exceptional. Bone Labs, I want to do that. I have uh, both games in the Wizards series. I have Blade and Sorcery. I want to cover all that stuff and more and do more stuff with VR chat. I love VR chat. And, you know, and maybe Neos and Rec Room and so much more because. Despite my vision, I can really enjoy VR because my eyes are so close to the screens and it's that OLED display with those deep blacks. I can really experience it. It, it works for me and I can see the 3D effect. And normally, with my normal vision, I've got crap uh, for depth perception which is what prevents me from being able to get a driver's license. So that's going to happen. And also we've got a, uh, a two day live stream coming up on the Gamers Bay channel where I will be playing um, Go a Scorn live um, on Halloween, Devil's Night and Halloween Night. I'll be playing that. Uh, that stream. Also, I am starting a new series over on Gamers Bay called Mouthing Off, where I give my completely unscripted, unfiltered opinion of things happening in and around the gaming industry. And here on this channel, I'm bringing back the professor. Finally, it's going to happen. I, I think I know what I find. I, I, I haven't been doing that show very much because I've been struggling with what I actually want the show to be. And I think I finally got an idea. How Mouthing Off gave me something of 
the idea of doing mouthing off sort of gave me my um, inspiration for that. And of course, I will still be doing, you know, the retro showcase on Gamers Bay. Where I'll be playing various retro games for that channel. It's a retro focused channel. Anyway, thank you for listening in to my uh, my rambling and talking about issues that um, we gamers who you know aren't able to see that well or or um, aren't able enough to do a lot of things that other people can do. The struggles we go through, the things that are hard for us to do. No, uh, I can't speak for people who are in wheelchairs, people who are paralyzed. I know that there are people who have been paralyzed with the neck down who still play games. They're, they've, they've been able to make controllers for them that allows them to do it. I know that people in wheelchairs who have mo movement of their hands, they can still play stuff like Beat Saber in their wheelchairs. It's still possible, or they can sit in a chair and play Beat Saber. I, I've known of that to be so, or they can still do stuff in VR and things. I, I've known that. I've seen that. So just because you might have a physical or visual impairment, or even a mental impairment, doesn't mean you can't enjoy video games. You might have to do things differently. There might be some games that you just can't play because of different issues. You know, I like that a lot of game developers are starting to include accessibility features in games. I've used some of them and they've helped me, actually. I have used some of them and they have helped. Uh, some, some of the features I don't need, but I have turned some of those features on and it has helped in, in those games that offer it. And I would like to see more developers you know, offer it. Not because I'm a snowflake and, and I'm bad at games. I'm actually fairly good at them. Except when I suck. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Mike Desorch. I have rambled on enough. Probably bored the heck out of you. But if this helps someone or if it, you know, just educates you on not everybody out there, not every gamer out there is able to see all that well. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. I really needed to, to say this. I actually feel a lot better now. Actually getting this off my chest. Thanks. See ya.